in Western Australia this week. It's just me and Vickers, who is in Canberra. In Canberra. The belly yeah. of the ugly beast. Yeah. The federal government. Yeah. Which, so, you know, unless somehow I, you haven't been alive for the last six weeks. We had a federal election yesterday. We were recording on the 19th. Yep. So we're going to be unsurprisingly our topic of discussion. Uh, because <coughs> why do you go first? I mean, are we just going to talk for half an hour? We don't have a set agenda. I think we're just going to sort of go through whatever. Yeah. So, uh, so basically for the second time in, I guess, both of our lives, we're watching a leader basically explain as they lost the unlosable election of their era. So uh, yes. prior to this, I believe uh, Bill Shorten had won 51 consecutive news polls in a row. Yep. Uh, and even on the, the eve of the election, like I think on Saturday morning news poll, I think it was news poll. Anyway, one, one of the polls was it was the Ipsos. It was the Ipsos poll. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually funny because that that very last Ipsos poll, uh, I actually got to participate in that one. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and they were like, you know, based on your voting. Attendance. So you were in fact part of the problem because you led astray the political class. How dare you? How dare you? Yeah. To be perfectly fair, uh, and my wife actually raised this, uh, uh, like based on what she was hearing me answer. She goes like, "Wait, Vickers, you're not really going to vote." Like, not going to vote for the Liberals, are you? And I basically said something along the lines of, well, I'm not going to preference them, number one. And then she said, but you're not going to preference them above the Greens or something. But you're still going to preference them above the Greens or something, right? And I basically said, yeah, obviously, right? But the, but, but she said, like, but the answer that you gave them would have led them to believe that you would have given Labor or Greens ahead on, on the preferences. Right. So... Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I I think if someone's really doing an analysis on that Ipsos poll, uh, they need mm. to look at the questioning and, uh, and yep. it'll immediately be obvious why the Liberal vote is not as high as they thought it would be. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't watch much of the election coverage because, spoiler alert, I hate elections. I think they're stupid um, and not in some, like, anarchist way. I just find them dull as hell. Um and Anthony, one part I did grab was Anthony Green was addressing that question of like, how did the polls get it so wrong? And essentially his analysis was that uh, it's basically this, you know, like polling is only as good as the questions and the sample. So if you have a bad sample or if you have bad questions and he, he identified particularly sampling and essentially that the nature of polling has changed and that can give you a false, false, pos well, effectively a false positive or false negative, however you want to put it. Um, no, but uh, I, I suspect you've got a lot of, I wouldn't say shy Tories, but I'd say people who were disappointed in the Liberal Party, who are Liberal Party supporters, uh, but in the polls they would have basically given the impression that, like, I said I wasn't going to give the Liberals first preference, right? Mm. But that didn't mean I was going to give them a preference lower than Labor. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Right. So, like, my vote would have been one of the ones that ultimately ended up in the Liberals' bucket, but they didn't mm. get my first preference. Sure. Yep. Right. So, uh, um, so, so my point is basically, I can believe based on my experience with the poll organization that mm. uh, that they probably need to review their methodology, uh, particularly the. <laughs> yes, I, I yeah. suspect most polling organizations are going to be looking at their their uh, their uh, um, uh, their polling, you know, process. Um, I mean, especially like. So the only thing I found actually funny about this entire thing was the uh, sports bet paying out for Labor on Thursday, I think it was. Yeah, they bet so, they they, uh, they they paid it out on Thursday at a dollar fifteen. Yeah. Uh, which which wasn't too bad actually. So so that payout was only they said they lost one point three million dollars as a result of that payout. Yeah. Which isn't actually that bad. That's that's pretty good. Uh, that, that 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 that's it could have been. Given the loss, given the rates they were giving out, yes, um, I, I think the coalition was on at eleven dollars on uh, on Saturday morning. Really? Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm kicking myself for not taking that bet, <laughs> right? But it yeah. was at eleven dollars, and I'm sitting there going, like, man, I should have fucking taken that. I was pretty like, yeah. I was sure that I I was at about at about the uh, at about the six o'clock point. I was like, if Labor wins, they're going to win it by one seat, right? I was literally yep. saying they were going to be at about 78, uh, sorry, 76, uh, sorry, 77 seats. 
um, that was at that was at about uh, no sorry that wasn't at six that was at five right and that was just based on what I saw in my seat here in Canberra mm. right I said if Labor wins like I saw a lot of Labor enthusiasm but like not as much as I was expecting for you know the the thing that people were saying like oh it's going to be like this massive landslide election yeah. so I was like what? yeah I, I wasn't expecting them to not lose it but I wasn't expecting them to sure. win it by much. Uh, then I watched the numbers come in from Queensland. I'm just like, fuck me. I did not see that coming. Anyone who says they saw that Queensland stuff coming in is lying, right? That yeah. was, that was. So, I mean, this, this is the nature of the, the thing is like, it, it, particularly in our system, it really, well, in, in fact, in, in any, yeah, anything that's like just not straight first past the post national poll. Yeah. It matters where the swing is. So like what we saw with the, the US election, uh, with in 2016, yeah, Hillary just smashed it in Colorado, in California, but she didn't need to smash it in California. She needed to smash it in Wisconsin, yeah, you know, or Pennsylvania or whatever else. And in here, like, yes, a bit, having a big swing, like kicking out Tony Abbott in Warringah, I mean, that was a huge yeah. swing. Um, but like, that's just one seat. Uh, and clearly, as we saw last night, you know, that the, the swing was not sort of a consistent one across the board, which is often how they do do the modeling it's like if there's a swing consistently across the board this is what the seat, final seats you know for news poll or whatever is going to be <coughs> well that's not what we clearly what we, no. what we saw here because there were swings to labor even sort of across the board to an extent or like they they didn't lose as well much as that's uh well that's my point is is uh so I, i've been using uh and the abc to look at the uh exactly where these uh swings to labor or swings to liberals have been Labor seems to have swung votes against the Greens, as far as I can tell. Like, they're in their electorates. Uh, they didn't seem to really win yep. in places like Reed, right, uh, which is where they were expecting. That was a marginal yep. seat they were expecting. Uh, they didn't really get the marginals they were hoping to get. Um, and simultaneously, they lost Queensland. That was, uh, I, I, like, I, I was just watching that. Uh, sorry, I was watching that number as it came in, and I went, like, I... I, 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 this looks like they're probably going to lose now. Uh, so, yeah. And if you take a look at it, effectively, there is a, you, you can pretty much draw a line uh, on the Murray Darling, right? And you can basically go everything north and west is pretty much blue. So, uh, yeah, okay. like, you, like, I was just like, oh, that's convenient. That's a convenient, the, the, the Murray Darling sort of line. The Murray Darling River line. You go like, Anything on the Murray River, yep. sorry, not the Murray, the Darling River, north and west, yeah, that's just blue. Yep. <clears throat> um, so maybe, I mean, is there in your mind anything specific? That so I'm going to rely on... That you're aware of? Because, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm much, I'm, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm almost like too skeptical to like... To say this is the reason why, just because my just that's just my nature. That's my approach to any of these kinds of abstractions. So I asked. Uh, it's basically I asked unknowable. the three. So the, it just so uh, happens I know one person living up there, and like two people who happen to be campaigning there. One was campaigning for Liberal, and one was campaigning for Labor. So ooh, how lucky! I can ask both parties. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and the guy who was campaigning for Labor actually <laughs> told me the most interesting story. He goes like. Bill, he could. He he was basically saying the number of times he had to lie to tell people that Labor was going to support the Adani thing up there. Right, the number of times he he he, he said specifically right, okay. he lied, right? Because he knew that federal Labor. Yeah. So so we're about to. Oh uh, yeah, this was further north. Was uh, 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 Dawson, I believe it was the district of Dawson. Uh, I just had to look it up. Uh, it's one of those. I, I, I just looked up exactly that that city name. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> what the is it Dawson? Uh, I'll I'll have to ask him again which one they were actually campaigning in. No, no, yeah. no. So this, I can, this no, is George no, Christensen's it wasn't that one, seat. Yeah. So it's sort of. Uh, I'll tell you what, yeah. I, I'll find yeah. out and we can do it like as a question. No, no, no. It was. It was. But it's not Brisbane. We're, it we're talking in, about like it's yeah, not it was in like North the, Queensland. The middle of Brisbane. Uh, okay. So, so the yeah. basically, they said, yeah. <clears throat> look, the the Liberal guy was like, we we just kept telling them they will close down the Adani plant, right? 
federal labor is not committed to it. And my uh, labor friend was basically saying, like, he, he, he would basically say, like, look, the, the Queensland Lib- uh, Labor Party supports it, right? And the Queensland Labor Party is a part of the caucus of the federal lab- yep. la- labor. The federal labor is not going to go against the state one, right? So he, he basically said he liked uh, yeah. and, and I, I've, re- I've repeated this to him. It's not his position that he lied, but I, I'm telling him he lied. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the point is basically... Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if I were to put money on anything, it would be the fact that Bill Shorten did not have a defined position on a Uh Just based on what the Liberal campaign out yeah. there was and based on what the Labour person that I know was saying his experience was. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I guess that that this is one of those things where you know Labor is trying to tra- tread a very fine line. I mean, really, it's that's a division amongst the old school unions and you know the progressive kind of wing. You know, they they can't really like they can't pick a side yeah. without pissing off one yeah. side of that equation. And um, basically, the, the the person that I know that lives up there was basically she she's she's a long time. Uh, liberal supporter, so uh, she wasn't going to swing away from them. <laughs> so, uh, no, yeah, but uh, like I said, I, I reckon Adani is um, probably what's done it for them up there. Uh, I'd be surprised to hear anything different. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I reckon the reason why they didn't win in the southern uh, sorry, not in the southern, but like in the uh, electorates that they thought they were going to win was Bill Shorten, not Bill Shorten. Um, Chris Bowen's arrogance. So Chris Bowen on the 30th of uh, January on ABC radio said, if you don't like our franking policy, you can just vote elsewhere. And I suspect like even those people who were on the fence, like something as arrogant as that kind of statement is just one of the ones that would push them to go. Okay, mate, I'll go vote somewhere else then. Which (coughs) I mean, I don't think it's an overly arrogant statement, really. I mean, basically, it's they're saying that they're not like, going to budge on it or anything like that. If um, it's like, it, yeah, they're like they're, they're not going to try and make it nicer. They're not going to try and smooth sure. its edges so it doesn't, you know, harm people in a certain way, right? That that didn't really come out in that interview. Right. Sure. So, like, so my sure that, that's that's the whole point. Like, <laughs> in some ways, like I think, like that is. You know, because often with any kind of big reform, there is a bundle of money that yeah. comes with it to goes to get doled out to smooth it over. Um, but I mean, really, a yeah, policy there like that, there's no way to smooth it over. So, like, I kind of, I mean, it is it is arrogance because the default is just endlessly accommodating of every special interest that might be some way affected. Yeah, which totally undermines the point of the policy in the first place. So you think about like the tariffs, you know, in 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 the US, where it's like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna do, yeah, we're, we're gonna improve America by having all these tariffs, and then they start bailing out the farmers to offset the effect of yeah. the tariffs. Well, the point of the tariffs is to affect. No, 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 no. I, no, I, I, so, yeah, I'm just anyway. saying it comes off as arrogant um, to a voter. So I, I suspect that that's I, I suspect that. Plus the Penny Wong not like sure. not being gracious and like you know like shaking hands with uh, God I can't even remember his name but like after after uh, what was it like the perform yeah yeah the, the, yeah I know what you're talking about <coughs> so after there was there was a public debate between Penny Wong and some guy I can't, I, I like yeah. I can't remember his name but they, and then there was the other instance uh, where two off. days ago uh, he was in West Australia. And uh, he said, you know, um, uh, we're ready to govern, right? Uh, there was that one. There was also he wrote a letter yep. to uh, Scott Morrison on the 25th of February uh, saying uh, there should be a smooth transition of power. Yep. Right? That, 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 that we should put a tra- transition sure. team into place. Which, I mean, this, this is one of the issues <clears> I'm <throat> trying to decipher how the election went the way it did, because all of those things, like if they'd won, none of those things yeah. would have really mattered. Which if they'd won. It's almost a tautology. But, um, you know, after the fact, you read, so like, so the best example is actually, so the best, so 
everybody should be familiar. If you're not, not familiar with this, the birth cake answer, birth, birth cake answer yeah. from John Hewson back in 93. And he's asked the question about the GST. It's actually... A, and if you actually... Yeah, it was actually answer, a sensible answer. It's yeah. totally a sensible answer. It's, like, there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. The only thing... The reason... There's two reasons why it was sort of pitched to how it was. Firstly, Mike Willisey, the, the interviewer, gave the perfect response for a gotcha. So, so John Hewson gives this kind of wordy, but actually relatively straightforward answer about, you know, the nature of how GST would work, which is that, you know, if you pay more for a birthday cake, it would depend how much tax you're paying beforehand. And there's lots of factors in that. That's an obvious answer. So he gives a slightly wordy response. But Mike, Will- Mike Willisey then says, well, if you can't yeah. explain it to me clearly, how should a voter expect you to understand it? And that is a killer line yeah. for a gotcha. Like, he was totally, he just, like, yeah. like John Hughes just stood there and Mike Willisey just stabbed him in the heart. Perfect. Which is great for a journalist. Like, that's what journalists should do. But it's only really, like, if he'd won the election, people would have, no, no, yeah. no way would people read into that yeah. answer that he gave a bad answer. It's only because he lost. And so one of my issues with all of these things you're mentioning, maybe not so much Adani, I think Adani is obviously like a clear, if you're a Queenslander and particularly a Queenslander north of Brisbane, you're going to want, you know, like an unclear, yeah, you want jobs and an unclear answer from the federal Labor Party is not going to help you. So that makes sense. That totally, But like all this other stuff, I kind of wonder, is it really decisive? Though? Like, does See, it really matter uh, that much? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's entirely possible that a bunch of small things add up. So like it's, you know, it's not just Penny Wong being rude. It's not just Bill Shorten maybe being a bit too presumptuous or sounding like he's too presumptuous or Chris Bowen so, giving a perfectly yeah, so, good answer so, to a question. Look, uh, I uh, think it's view. little things adding up. I think each one of those instances – added up maybe 0.2, maybe 0.3%, okay. right? And it just kind of adds up. Like, it's just like it's just like how yeah. Latham lost, right? There was this image that was built up. Yeah. Yeah. It, wasn't it was just everything the, it that just led up to the handshake. The and when that handshake, the aggressive happened. handshake happened, people go like, I don't trust that guy anymore. Yeah. So I think it's like little things all added up. Oh, and then as it got really close, people just went like, I don't think I can do the short thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I can. I, I don't think I can live in a short and run Australia. Maybe. Yeah. So. Sure. And I mean, it's always this redundant what I'm saying yeah. because it's. But the exit actually, polls were so exit wrong. Polls, the exit which, polls. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if. It, it, yeah, like, and you're not just poll, you're not just polling people yeah. on their voting preference, but their reason for voting, which. I, I, I know it does happen, but I don't think it happens as that much because, I mean, obviously it's a very <coughs> intensive process to sit there after And most people don't want to do it. Ask them why they the, uh, the, um, yeah. Yeah, most people don't want to do it because they find it painful, like I do. Um, and then you can't really poll people after the election's been finished, like has been resolved because then people change their answers <coughs> based on this, you know, hindsight. Yeah, so, so based on that, like I, uh, I would sit there and go, yeah. I I reckon it's very similar to what happened with Latham. I think a number of things had gone their way. There were spectacular levels of arrogance shown by the Labor Party, uh, particularly Chris Bowen. I would say particularly Chris Bowen. I would say uh, I find it very hard to fault uh, Bill Shorten yeah. on this one. I like Bill Shorten did a couple of things that were a bit egregious, but more or less it was Chris Bowen that fucked it up for them. I mean, it's also just. Yeah, uh, Bill Shorten is just Bill Shorten. Like, well, you know, so not, the other part is he's no Obama. That's he's not even sure. a Kevin. You know, um, yeah, and he's not so, even a so Kevin. Biggest, I mean, you know, one Kevin thing Wright. that's like really pissed me off yeah. about Bill Shorten, like forever and a day, is that he tries to talk in this woke progressive language set of like, you know, I was the guy who picked him. You know, I was a poor white. You know, sorry, I'm a working class white guy who picked himself up by the bootstraps. Except he's not. Right, and neither are his parents. His parents are actually super successful, you know, beneficiaries of the union movement, right? So, like his his dad did really well from the maritime union. His yeah. mum, like she could actually fund herself to getting two degrees because of free education, right? And because that uh, because of that really nice teachers uh, teachers pension, right, which no longer exists by the way, but back in her day did. She could actually tide herself yeah. with that really nice pension. 
and free education and become a really good lawyer, right? I sit there and go like, that's not the, t- so the story he was like, oh, my mom would have been such a great barrister if she had gone at the age of 18 instead of having me, you know, and then, you know, she, she was forced to wait and put it out till that, you know, till her 50s. And I sit there and go like, you don't know struggle, sure, right? That's not, that's. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't, I, I don't know if I, that I, actually really I can, matters. I, think I can definitely tell you. It's, you know, yeah. these things, like it's like, politics is wrestling, right? So, so the ability to sell, so the sure. idea in wrestling uh, is, this is like professional wrestling, you know, like WWE style wrestling. Which yeah, is but the you idea need to sell, sell. then punch that me. Is, yeah. When I go to punch you, I don't actually hit you, but you react in such a way. Yeah, you know, and and when you do a a promo, like when you deliver dialogue, and that's my point setting, is that nobody like, believes he's working that, class. That, you know, p- performs rightly, and I think, but he tries yeah. so hard. So, yeah, but I think that's because he can't sell it. So like, it, yeah. it, it doesn't like it, it could have it could have had a board with a silver spoon in his mouth. But like you know, if he could sell, like if he actually yeah. could speak in a so, way that sounded like a human, sure, being, yeah, and and, and the weird thing with the 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 sunscreen. Who does it with their nut? Like, it's just like, dude, right? Nobody like he has this like thing. He tries so hard to do it, yeah, right. It, the labor people eat it up, right? Until now, and they're going yeah. like, yeah, okay, he wasn't really working class. You know who wasn't yeah. working class, who didn't come from working class roots at all, but could fucking sell the working class? Bob Hawke, right? That guy's a fucking Rhodes Scholar. He went to the best unis. He went to the best schools. Yeah. He had rich parents who, like, really, really, like, yeah. he is the quintessential champagne socialist. Yeah. My God, yeah, but that's like that's you would not—you would not think him. You would not think him to have been born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But yeah, he was, you know, and yeah, and 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 to be fair, you can sell arrogance. Yeah, and that's so another thing. Oh, I, I love the fact that Keating was technically the guy right who pulled himself yeah, like, up yeah, like from it, nothing, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet, most people—if you put Hawk and yeah. Keating next to yeah. each other and go like, which one of these was born with a silver poon, spoon in the mouth? They go Keating. And I'm there going like, nah, not even. Yeah, but my point. Yeah. No. But that that's because Keating's personality is he's a twat, but he's you know, <laughs> he, he, but he knows his stuff and he delivers as a treasurer and, and prime minister. That's entirely why he worked yeah. well as a. Uh, yeah, I mean that's why he's got all the best lines ever in par- in Parliament. But yeah, and and how he managed to pull get across the line in '93. So, I mean, I think that's. But I mean, yeah. So I. In some ways, I don't blame Bill Shorten for not being super charismatic because not everybody is like that. And the, the way you become leader in a political party is not necessarily be by being the most charismatic. It's by getting enough votes in the caucus to get across the line. So, you know, I guess I don't want to... Well, that, that, like, oh, I guess know, that's why I sit Bill there and go like, I didn't thing. like him, but I find um, myself having to defend him from his own party people saying he lost it. I'm like, no, he didn't. He, I don't think he's the one who should bear the blame for losing it. I if I was put if I was to point to a single person who could be blamed for losing for the, for this election, it's Bill. It's, sorry, it's Chris Bowen, right? It's just uh, he, he fucked it up on several occasions. They should have dropped that okay. as soon as the first hint of that uh, of that uh, what do you call it? That their inability to sell that franking credit policy, right? They should have dropped it. That was the that was the albatross around their neck for the entire election. Yeah. Uh, and I reckon that just that that just paved the way for Adani to come and kill them, mm. right? It was like it was it was it was like if you really want to look at what the working class was sure. hearing during this election, right? You have Labor basically saying, "Well, we're not committed to these, you know, jobs that are here right now because we don't know what those inner city lefties are going to think about it, right? Like we 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 need to get them on base before we allow you to do your work out yep. here." Then on top of that, they're like. They're talking about taxing pensioners who don't vote their way, right? And on top of that, they're like, you know, that you can find yeah. articles from just last year where the ACTU basically voted at their national conference, right, to reintroduce debt taxes. Australians hate debt taxes, right? And, and it's just like you've got him standing up there and saying, look, yeah. there won't be any debt taxes under a government I lead. And, you know, people remember the last time a Labour leader stood up there and said, there will be no tax under a government that I lead. Well, I mean, in some ways, this, this, 
Yeah. This, this leads into what I want to talk about. This, so this is this is my thing about the election. And again, this this is coming out of my own skepticism about you know everything. Does this actually matter though? Because yes, like so the issue that you've yeah. just highlighted, which is yeah. there's nothing in these <coughs> elections that is binding after the election. That is, they can promise the world and either they don't deliver it, or they deliver something else, or they bring in something they didn't even talk about. So in some ways, I almost want to see you know, the like when it comes to policy, like talking about elections, we should actually look at what was promised at the last election and exactly what was delivered that was promised uh, and what was delivered that wasn't promised, like that wasn't even flagged in the election. Because I think that's actually what really matters is because, you know, a, a lot of people on Facebook, particularly sort of amongst the people that we know, the the, the, the Australian Taxpayers Alliance and people who are involved in, in campaigning for, for the Liberals, <laughs> they're talking about how this is, you know, like, the, you know, the working people have pushed back against taxes and, you know, like against identity politics and all that stuff. Well, Scott Morrison can bring that taxes in anytime he wants. You know, like there's not, there's nothing to say that so, we will actually have smaller government as a result of this election because... Elections aren't actually well, about... You know, you have to govern uh, in the next policies three and they're years. not about what the actual governments will do for the next three years. What they're about is a peaceful transition of power between the bloke on the right and the bloke on the left. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 I sure, hope that that is correct. start pointing that back at me. Um, so yeah, I mean, so I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. So like, I think, I mean, aside from my lack of enthusiasm for politicians <laughs> in general, aside from maybe like, you know, maybe he's Peter not in. Phelps, you know, he's not in he parliament. About zombies in parliament. It's a fucking show. And yeah. maybe Aaron Stonehouse. I know, I know, but he did talk about it. It is. It's, it's yeah, it's awful. Um, having said that, yeah, no, he could be my dungeon he master. Do better again. things with his time. Um, uh, <laughs> I would love to play in a D and D game with Peter Phelps. That would be awesome. Um, uh, <laughs> what, was, what was I? I was in the middle of saying something. Yeah, I I don't see any reason to. I don't know, be optimistic that there's things are going to be any better, either under Labor or Liberal. You know, like, is there really so much of a difference that we're going to have a radically different vision of government under Scott Morrison? Well, mate, Team Blue you know, is allegedly like, much know, more freedom-oriented than Team Red. I've been told. Well, allegedly. It is no. Um, it, it, it is no. It is no. <laughs> we have it under good authority that people talk about that, <laughs> uh, whether that actually happened. Yeah. It is, Although, it is known. Um, yeah, I, I I just find it hard not to be... I don't know, am I being too cynical? You tell me, because it, like, even though we have a... Sh- we, this show, almost as a matter of policy, is very cynical and sceptical generally of politicians. Am I being too cynical to say there's no difference? Okay, there's so no expectation I want a game of... Spo- a game of am I being too hard? Coming up. So, so, I... Wait, what? Oh, okay. Have you not let... Have you not? Go, go. go. Are you ever going to watch Game of Thrones? I haven't seen it. I don't watch Game of Thrones. Uh, Uh, Okay. Not very. Well, that's the thing. I Uh, think I might watch it. I might eventually watch it. Okay. How spoilery is it? uh, Imagine Daenerys in season three, where she's the uh, breaker of chains, right? And Daenerys in the last episode, right? So we're at uh, the end of the election, uh, which means she's like in season three, breaker of chains. uh, And she'll be. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 So Free, freeing the slaves. I I've read yeah, the okay. books. I've read up to so, book four. Like, so like I'm, winning an election. I'm, I'm is like so I know I know about the freeing of the uh, slaves thing. The last episode is what they're like when they're ruling. <laughs> yeah. 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 Blood and Which fire. <laughs> I, I, I do know enough to know that it was bad. <laughs> uh blood and fire, yeah. Yes, which I mean, and that's what I, I I agree. I just sometimes I wonder if I am too too cynical about these things. I I don't ever feel like my cynicism has ever really been repudiated. So maybe I'm just Should thinking we about pop- this too much. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if it, by the way, anyway, uh, like if we had an episode last two, week, I would have told you to buy your Friedman tickets uh, because that's happening next week. It's yeah, it's not. Yep. Yeah, which is <coughs> it's next weekend. This week, uh, coming this weekend. Is, this is so the first time that they've collaborated the with the World it's Tax Organization. So there'll be speakers from all around the world. Unfortunately, you can no longer buy your tickets. I've been told. 
So unless you write specifically on the ATA website or something like that. Uh, but, but I believe Tammy has a code for 10% off. I know she's not here, but she plugged the code, which I think is okay. Tammy10. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, yep. Yeah. She's yeah. got her own so, page. I mean, it's worth a shot. Uh, so go you, to the Friedman Conference page. webpage and see if you can buy the ticket. All right. And see you there next yeah. week. That sounds good. That's a good way to finish it. All right. Well, um, I guess... No, yeah, no, so you'll I'll be, be there. So I guess we may not record because you'll be in Sydney still on the Sunday. Yep. Uh, be I don't no, know if Tammy will be there. Record. You, can, yeah. you can give us a, 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 a breakdown of everything. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll be back again next week.